Racial trauma isn't just something that black and brown Americans experience regularly. It's something health experts say they're born into. What makes it traumatic is how you experience it. Similar to PTSD, racial trauma or race-based traumatic stress is the collective effect racism has on an individual's mental and physical health. It can be from major experiences like workplace discrimination or hate crimes, or it can be the result of an accumulation of many small indignities called microaggressions, or system or institutions that enforce structural oppression. There was a national survey done by the American Psychological Association, and about 25% of all African Americans, 30%, of all Native Americans report at least one of those experiences at least once a week. The APA says not only do Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and Asian American people significantly suffer from racial trauma, but that it can also compound with additional oppression based on gender or sexual orientation. It depends on the intensity and the frequency of how often you experience racism or how severe the event is, but you might start with just race-based stress. So something will be racist and you'll be exposed to it and you'll feel stress, but racial trauma is really when it has those long-term effects. It really sticks with you. Immediate symptoms can include increased heart rate or blood pressure, heightened cortisol levels, sweating, or tension in the body. Long-term chronic exhaustion and fatigue are among the most common symptoms. The sadness underlying or overt anger, um, you know, even thinking differently about yourself. So sometimes believing or starting to endorse those stereotypes that people might have about your racial group. If you're experiencing racial trauma, you might have some of that internalized racism. Increased hypervigilance, the having the nightmares or flashbacks, avoidance of situations where they may, you know, perceive it as threatening. Um, all of those are consistent with what we find in race-related stress and PTSD. And so there are there's a lot of overlap. Kind of, you know, bouncing back and forth between that and none, and never really feeling safe and socially connected and supported. And that also affects your brain and how your brain develops. America's healthcare system impacts racial trauma too, making it more difficult not only to find help, but someone who understands a patient's experience. A 2015 study found that in the U.S., 86% of psychologists were white. 5% were Asian, 5% were Hispanic, 4% were Black. Meanwhile, some of the experts we spoke to are setting out to help. Dr. Candace Nicole Hargens released Black Lives Matter meditations for racial trauma victims and white allies. Black Lives Matter. Therapist Kelly Baker has helped organize Facebook Live videos with her local NAACP branch where anyone can connect to learn more about racial trauma. She's included sharing her own experiences. I don't think you can say that there was ever a time for me when I did not, um, that I was never exposed to racism. You know, when I think about my family, you know, my mom, my grandmother, um, and the things that my mother experienced that were clearly racist definitely affected how she parented her children. What can be done to respond to racial trauma? Dr. Erlanger Turner tells Newsy adding an official diagnosis of racial trauma to the DSM-5, an encyclopedia of sorts for mental health professionals, is not the solution. He suggests racial trauma's existence is something everyone should be aware of, especially healthcare providers and policymakers. If you are white, you do need to make sure that you try to understand that person's experience, that you provide some sense of solidarity, that you don't apologize. I think people oftentimes want to apologize in these situations and that's really not helpful. We need solutions. And so I think that is one of those things that we, we have to do better and make sure that we take ownership. Lindsay Thies, Newsy, Denver.